see your baby's napkins for those where they change. You feel say, mm, not disposable, no. Whether it is disposable or you not know disposable, wash your hands. Or water system, you wash your hands. Mm. Then, after cleaning up a child who has used the toilet, maybe a child that is older, you wash your hands. If the child uses potty, the thing where they call pole locally, you go empty them. You should wash your hands. This thing look like saying, I wish can I take this? When, when, who gets into the two other ones when I get my business? If you do it, it is very profitable. Praise the Lord. Then after blowing your nose, after coughing, after sneezing, there are some, when they sneeze like this, they can go on like this. Kata go enter, you go see say do one like this. Am I lying? Praise the Lord. After touching animals, you know some of us, we like, or uh, maybe the business you do at home. You get a uh, goat, you get a uh, uh, fowl, you know, dog or whatever. When you, do, you don't handle them, you give them food, you carry their waste to away. You're supposed to wash your hands. You don't go empty those pain. You're supposed to wash your hands. And it does mean when we get to house, you're supposed to get copper. Don't just leave it open like that. Praise the Lord. How should you wash your hands? There is a procedure for washing hands. Not to just go under the tap, go and many hands. No. First of all, you will wet your hands with clean running water. First of all, wet your hands. When you don't wet your hands, then you put soap. When you put the soap, rub the soap. Make sure, say, you rub your hands together with the soap. Make sure, say, the foam, it come out. When you then wash your hands, you go wash the back of your hands. It's part of your hands. Am I communicating? Back of your hands. Then between your fingers. It's very important. Then under your nails. You know there are some. The nails. No, if you look at some nails. Then we have some black or brownish things there. Not dirty like carry. It's not good. That thing can contaminate food or anything. You can use it to carry anything. Especially those where they wear long legs. And those where they carry artificial. It's not too good. May God help us in Jesus' name. Scrub your hands. When you don't put soap like that, you don't wash it between your fingers. You don't wash under your nails. Take the other nail. Take, try to remove anything away the inside. You wash your back at least for 20 seconds. For 20 seconds. You know, reach up a minute. Run, rinse your hands well under clean running water. Bow of food everywhere now. No wear water, no day. You get wear water, no day again. If you not get, Somebody can use cup to be pouring it in your hands while washing. Praise the Lord. Then you not clean your hands with dry towel. If you get air, whether they take dry hands, better. You just turn it on, put your hands under the air, it will dry up. Then, assuming you dare a place, you not get soap, no clean uh, uh, running water. Or no, yes, no running water. What you can use in place of soap now, like ash, beneath the corner, a moin. Use that moin to wash your hands in way when we take the sky, you now say that they wash hands. Then water where you store for, for, for container with cover, clean water, use and take it your hands. Then if you still have it, you can use the alcohol based hand sanitizer. Which most people they carry in their pockets. I thought I would bring one. Sorry, I couldn't. Now, when you finish whatever you are doing, just put it. Use it to rub your hands. In between your fingers, rub it very well. It will dry up until you get to a place where you can get enough water. That is for that concerning a hand hygiene. We now go to foot hygiene. It's good to take very good care of your feet. Not be our foot will they take water everywhere. Not be will they take water everywhere. If sickness is there, 
If sickness, they will not be taken waka. They will not be taken waka. So it's very important we take good care. It should be washed regularly, every time, frequently. You feel say you come back for money now. You go market. You they come back. For chopot full everywhere. When you enter house, before you go enter inside your house, what will be the first thing you're supposed to do? Yes, you will wash your leg in, in between. Because some people, even for that potter potter, as they put leg for that dirty water, they get some kind of sicknesses. It does swimming pool, to those where they go swimming pool. Now, when you go there, you can contract that thing if you do not wash your legs and keep them dry. Praise the Lord. So when, after washing your legs, you will dry them very well, pay attention to between the toes. Don't keep them moist. Praise the Lord. Why do you do this? To prevent and control unpleasant odors. To, due to excessive food perspiration or wetness. You know, say, I don't know whether I don't experience them. When some people, they wear they sweat, wear, wear, or your feet, they wet all the time. You wear shoes, especially cover shoes. Please, not the rich time. When you remove leg, how they be? You go, they smell. The best way to down here, you know, go, they comfortable. So that's why you have to do this. If you they wear shoes, Make you they change your shoes at least once a day. If you they wear socks, change your socks. Not use one socks for so many days. Then perhaps maybe you find yourself in a public place, a public bathroom. Not take ordinary leg, enter the place because you don't know who entered there before. Whether you get a foot uh, problem to avoid what they call athlete's food and other infections. This uh, foot too, we need exercise. Why do we need to do exercise for our feet? To promote circulation, make blood the flow there. When you want to do your foot exercise, mm -hmm. just look up, you raise your feet up this way, up this way, down, up, down, then in circles, you move it in circles. Even when you are sitting there, you can do it. Praise the Lord. This will help to uh, bring put um, nutrients to your feet. If you have injury on your feet, please treat it properly and promptly. Quick, quick, attend to them. Now, some people they will be say their legs go dry, go dry when we like stockfish. You can avoid it. So to avoid the excessive drying of the skin of the feet. You can soak them in warm water mixed with Epsom salt. Soak your feet in warm water mixed with Epsom salt. Then keep it dry like we advised before. Then in between your toes. Pay particular attention to it. Just apply some mild cream. I said here like Oreo Oreo, which is very cheap. Anybody can buy it. With gentle massage. Praise the Lord. So, to, for your foot hygiene too, it's not good to wear tight fitting shoes, very tight shoes. If they get stretched, you wear them and go rich. If they wear high heels before, try to they go on low heels because it will affect those bones. May God help us in Jesus' name. The next one is uh, hair hygiene. You wash your hair regularly. For those that have short hair, that are wearing short hair, they do it, they wash it every day. Every day. And you just oil it a little and massage your scalp. Using a, for those that are not a, that flat, maybe twice a month, using, washing it off with mild shampoo or mild toilet soap. You might say for those that do not have a toilet soap. Eye hygiene. Normally, the eyes do not require special hygiene. Because the tear continually washes, wash the eyes, and the eyelids and lashes prevent the entrance of foreign particles. When something won't fall for your eye, what thing will happen? Quickly, your, you will see your eye closed. Praise the Lord. Ear hygiene. Normally, ears require minimal hygiene. You don't need to go to wash the side inside your ear. This one where we see so wear earring there. When you they bath, you wash them. 
Take your hand. Go around. Some boys say they wax the day. Inside the ear, it gets much more hair where they inside. Now they help you push the oil where they come stick like that towards the ear. Where your hand will reach, you pull them out. But say you go to use uh, things, biofoba, toothpick, cutting board to remove wax. It is very harmful. It is very harmful. When the wax is too much, there is something, there is a special oil you can put. Some few drops, it will melt away. Oral or mouth hygiene. This one is another very important one. Our mouth. Our mouth. It is very, very important. You see the the way we got to create this mouth and the heart. Some blood vessels there where they link with the heart. So anything where affects your mouth deep down, the blood vessel can take it to the heart. You can start having problems. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. Is the practice of keeping one's mouth clean, free of disease or other problems, such as bad breath. When some people they breathe out the open mouth, it is terrible. I know at one time or the other, some of us don't experience that. Not be so. Now don't come across people like that. Yes. Then tooth decay. Their teeth don't chop so they, you know. Then the gum it will swell. Then the mouth, inside the mouth, the mouth will swell, it will get so so so. But you can keep it clean by brushing your teeth and cleaning between the teeth. Brush twice a day before breakfast and before going to bed. How many times? Before breakfast and before going to bed. Then let me come in there. Even at that, you get some food when you go eat, go be like say, it stick for your mouth, in between. Take water, use and swish your mouth, swish and swish and throw well. Take and swish your mouth. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Then pour it away. Uh -huh. Who's so well? Uh -huh. Pour it away. Then there's another thing you can do, some day, day in between teeth. You get one thing where they call, or what they call floss. It be like thread. Be like this fishing thread. Then they, it's, you find them in supermarkets. Just cut it. You go hold them in between your teeth. Pull them like this, like this, like this. You go see say they either they bring meat waste for there or corn or any food where you eat. And you know such things when they get inside mouth, it can cause wahala. And those things, nine bacteria, nine bacteria they work on. When you work on them, the acid content go high. Go they melt your teeth. It will give you hope. Make up 
items. There are so many, you know your personal things. You must not share it with any person. It is not proper because it can increase the likelihood of spreading infection. Am I communicating? It can increase it. So because of that, please don't share it. Some mothers now they will use their own brush and feed it for their babies. Their children is wrong. If you have been doing it, please desist from it. It is wrong. But if those things are cheap in the market, if you cannot get that, use chewing seed. It's as good. Sleep hygiene. Sleep is very important for you to be able to maintain your health. Ensure plenty of rest. After a hard day's job, it is important. It is needful for every human being to rest. At least you have at least 8 to 10 hours sleep at night. So you are, you are refreshed. When you have adequate rest, you are refreshed. And you are ready to take on the next day's job the following morning. Mentally, you are that. Lack of rest and sleep can make you to snap. If you not rest well, you think we're not making, we're not reach your best food. Somebody will talk to you. You will see say you will just like that. True or false? We never experience that. So it's good to rest. And when you know rest, your immunity can bring it down. That it can run it down terribly. So the, that which is not in your character, you start displaying it by snapping, snapping. When you are tired, please rest. If you are a business woman, oh, this business. Praise the Lord. You be business woman. You will say, oh, I'm not going to see chance rest. I'm not going to see chance rest. If sickness know you, you will see it go. That sickness where you, where God force you rest, now better rest with that. That's why right, so you go rest, where your body will relax. Please, let us form the habit of resting. Praise the Lord. Close my chain. This is an important aspect of one's dignity. Your dressing, not necessarily ex putting on expensive clothes. When you dress properly, moderately in the Christian way, your carriage, the way you talk and do your things, it brings the kind of air of dignity around you. Usually there are two layers of clothing. Sorry, let me go back to it. It's an important uh, uh, I think many people they say Ukmo Edomo. Not be so now they talk. Ukmo Edomo. Ukmo at Edomo. Good. That's Ukmo. When they get to Edomo, if it gets in and go Domo and again. Praise the Lord. Usually there are two layers of clothing. Now two types of cloth. Now we they wear every day, especially women. True or false? You get the one where they under. Such as your underskirt, your pants, your vest, t-shirts. Now those ones, they really touch your skin. Pass this one where we wear on top. Not be so. So the ones where they near your skin, now they collect sweat. Now they rub your body. When it be say, that part of your skin where, where they wear off gradually, it go there, it go there stop to run. If you not change them all the time, as you're supposed to change them daily, you go see collect some gems. And when you wear them again, one form of sickness or the other infection, you go enter person body. Praise the Lord. Underwear must be washed more, more frequently than the outer layer clothing. More frequently. You understand? Not be waiting you go the you wear them today. We day yes, it's money now. All of us they sweat. Tomorrow you will carry the same on that skirt well. You will you will carry the same bra well. Is it right? Praise the Lord. So they should be washed more frequently. Change used clothes with clean ones daily. Wash dirty clothes and iron to destroy parasites. Boiled water can be used for infested clothes. Clothes that are infested with scabies or tumble fly lava. There are times when you put your clothes for a rope, fly the whole patch on the cloth. You're not going to know. You're going to wear them for the child. 
because you not iron the cloth. You were wearing them for that picking. When you wear them for the picking, that small egg way there, it will enter the picking. If they happen to adults, it will come they grow, it will grow, it will be big. You were just saying a boy. And the boy not they right. After some time, you see the face don't come out. You will see something they move inside. I don't know whether I don't experience them. When they go, they call and they pour oil. When you put uh, oil on top of the face, the, the worm will come out. So that is why it's necessary to iron your clothing, especially the children's clothes. If such a thing there is there, the hot iron will kill it. May God help us in Jesus' name. Menstrual hygiene. How do you keep yourself when you are menstruating? The female reproductive organ is able to clean itself, itself naturally. So no special care is needed. We know you must have been educated. Women, when they use soap, take wash their inner body. If they've been advised to stop using soap. You can wash the surface with soap and clean water. Even clean water. The inner body, you use soap. Cases of cancer have been reported, but that is not our portion. In Jesus' name. So the surface where you go busy, just use clean water. Change your sanitary pad regularly as at when due. Don't use one from morning to evening. You, you can contract some discomfort or infection. <laughs> sanitary pad. Make with a changer, not be one we go use in a day. Oh. I talk and you know, hear me. And you go wash your hands before and after you don't use your pad. You guys saw when not go fit by the pad. When you get your own clothes that are good, cut them into sizes. Wash them, keep them clean. Make sure you wash them regularly and change them as often as possible in place of pad. Then the pad, not show them anyhow. Put them in a cellophane bag, you can burn them. We now know what is happening out there. People go about looking for used pads for rituals. So please dispose of your sanitary pad very well. Let me know keep on well though. When I want to wear and a bit burn them. Praise the Lord. Personal hygiene and food preparation. Good practices are essential for food preparation, not only in industry but in domestic setting, also to avoid illness and even death. Praise the Lord. So it would make we get good habits. Some of them will be discussing about it. The emphasis is in keeping surfaces clean at all times. Our kitchen, the utensils where we they use. You could let with the keep them clean every time. Even if fly enter your kitchen. Nothing will even bring fly. Now bad order they bring fly, not be so. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. So those who get their dogs, who get cats or fowl, then they run up and down. Not that they come follow you stay inside kitchen, they follow you share your cooking. Or you they eat for here, dog they eat for this other place too. You know good. Give them a separate place where they go to chop their food. Eh? Then the toilet environment should not be close to your kitchen. Praise the Lord. Children should be encouraged to eat off floor. Some children, they like to eat for ground. Make it discourage them. Because when you teach them from the cradle, now they will take room. So, and educated from very early age about the importance of personal hygiene and food preparation. Suggestions and conclusion. Hand washing is extremely important. In all of this, hand washing is very, very important. Hand should be washed at least following these actions before and after food preparation. Before you start with a cook and after you don't cook. Before and after using kitchen utensils. 
the things where they use your pots, your pans for kitchen. Before you wash, wash your hands. After washing, wash your hands. After using the toilet, wash your hands. After sneezing and coughing, wash your hands. When maybe you touch your face or anything, or you empty things, you wash your hands. You know there are times. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You shake as many hands. Before anything goes into your mouth, what should we do? Praise the Lord. Avoid food that has fallen into the floor. Food for for grind, go pick and eat. You go say, this is not a killer, African man. Who tell you so? May God help us so. The floor of it look clean. But your shoe, when you take water, when you take match that clean floor, you don't carry millions of harmful bacteria. If it match uh, goat sheep, dog sheep, cat sheep, you go see they can put enter that place. May God help us in Jesus' name. When one is sick or have any known infection or open wound, do not cook. Anyone where they handle food, they're supposed to go to general examination, especially public food. If that individual gets TB, please spread the TB. May God help us in Jesus' name. Minimize talking while cooking or serving food. When do they cook? Talk less. When do they serve food? Talk less. So that your saliva not go for food. Because some people have, some people's saliva is poisonous. Because it is infected. But when they are treated, they can get better. Praise the Lord. Use of clean cups and apron is advisable. When you they cook large food, even in homes, individual homes, some people use cups and apron while cooking. Open wound or open wound. Do not uh, sorry. Best practices include what is the best thing when you go do for personal hygiene? Cleaning and tidying as you cook to prevent contamination of food items and avoid food poisoning. When you enter some kitchen, the place you don't know whether not kitchen or not refuse uh, ground. Anything when you cook for ground. Yeah, yeah, rubber bag when you eat. Vegetable when you pick. Onions when you pick. Oh, good ground. As you are doing it, you clean along. That's what we're saying here. Praise the Lord. As you they cook, as you get it, they come out. Maybe they put them for one particular place. Why do we do this? So that your food not go be contaminated and avoid food poisoning. You know, food poisoning is very common. Cover your food properly. When water pour for ground or oil pour for ground, so that accident not go happen. Small picking feet they run, they come. The thing taking leg, another feet they come. In slippers go, it go slip. It go fall. So in order to avoid accident, as it they happen, they address them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Clean your cupboards, fridges regularly to avoid cockroaches and rats from making it their permanent home. Cook your food thoroughly, especially raw meat. Mekuna de kukuna meat well well no. Check expiry date of products before using them. The things where you they take cook. When will they buy? When will they thin? If they cook, look whether it don't expire. If it expire, what you will go do to ram? Good. Buy the one whenever expire. Don't share cutlery with others unless washed in between. Maybe big place like this, where they do have extra time. The place not go around for serving. Eh? Then the one when they don't use chop finish, you could just go take and serve again another set. It must be washed. Plates and spoons and cups. That's what this place is trying to tell us. Praise the Lord. In conclusion, the individual level or standard of hygiene depends on the habits learned, learned over the years. If you now if you be person where it needs well well, it depends on 
how you take Kenya right from home when you were brought up. From the early stage at home, school, or by association, which 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 are influenced by other uh, our various cultural backgrounds. Other things, you know, say with the lessons from home. Education, now continuous thing. Learning, now continuous thing. Everybody, you're supposed to be learn every time. We can learn from each other. If you get waiting, this mama sabi well well. You know sabian. You learn from her. Praise the Lord. However, in whatever way we have learned, let's always have in our minds that good personal hygiene is the first step to good health. Good personal hygiene might be the first step. As speaking, they take the first worker when you go take your you go take acquire good health. It does not only protect you from poor health, but it also shields those around you from suffering illnesses that arise from poor personal habits. Thank you and God bless us all. Give us all the grace to improve our habits in Jesus' name.